Papua New Guinea, Wikipedia article audio. Coordinates, 6 degrees south 147 degrees east. Slash, 6 degrees south 147 degrees east. Slash dash 6, 147. History. Government and politics. Law. Foreign policy. Military. Human rights. Administrative divisions. Geography. Borders. Ecology. Environmental issues. Economy. Land tenure. Demographics. Urbanization. Languages. Health. Religion. Culture. Sport. Education. Science and technology. Transport. Sources. Papua New Guinea Talk Pison, Papua Niugenai, Hairi Motu, Papua New Guinea, officially the independent state of Papua New Guinea, is an Oceanian country that occupies the eastern half of the island of New Guinea and its offshore islands in Melanesia, a region of the southwestern Pacific Ocean north of Australia. Its capital, located along its southeastern coast, is Port Moresby. The western half of New Guinea forms the Indonesian provinces of Papua and West Papua. Primary Sources At the national level, after being ruled by three external powers since 1884, Papua New Guinea established its sovereignty in 1975. This followed nearly 60 years of Australian administration, which started during World War I. It became an independent Commonwealth realm in 1975 with Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state and became a member of the Commonwealth of Nations in its own right. Papua New Guinea is one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world. It is also one of the most rural as only 18% of its people live in urban centers. There are 852 known languages in the country, of which 12 now have no known living speakers. Most of the population of more than 7 million people live in customary communities, which are as diverse as the languages. The country is one of the world's least explored, culturally and geographically. It is known to have numerous groups of uncontacted peoples, and researchers believe there are many undiscovered species of plants and animals in the interior. Papua New Guinea is classified as a developing economy by the International Monetary Fund. Strong growth in Papua New Guinea's mining and resource sector led to the country becoming the sixth fastest growing economy in the world in 2011. Growth was expected to slow once major resource projects came online in 2015. Mining remains a major economic factor, however. Local and national governments are discussing the potential of resuming mining operations in Panguna Mine in Bougainville Province, which has been closed since the Civil War in the 1980s-1990s. Nearly 40% of the population lives a self-sustainable natural lifestyle with no access to global capital. Most of the people still live in strong traditional social groups based on farming. Their social lives combine traditional religion with modern practices, including primary education. These societies and clans are explicitly acknowledged by the Papua New Guinea Constitution which expresses the wish for traditional villages and communities to remain as viable units of Papua New Guinean society and protects their continuing importance to local and national community life. 
Archaeological evidence indicates that humans first arrived in Papua New Guinea around 42,000 to 45,000 years ago. They were descendants of migrants out of Africa, in one of the early waves of human migration. Agriculture was independently developed in the New Guinea highlands around 7000 BC, making it one of the few areas in the world where people independently domesticated plants. A major migration of Austronesian-speaking peoples to coastal regions of New Guinea took place around 500 BC. This has been correlated with the introduction of pottery, pigs, and certain fishing techniques. In the 18th century, traders brought the sweet potato to New Guinea, where it was adopted and became part of the staples. Portuguese traders had obtained it from South America and introduced it to the Moluccas. The far higher crop yields from sweet potato gardens radically transformed traditional agriculture and societies. Sweet potato largely supplanted the previous staple, taro, and resulted in a significant increase in population in the highlands. Although by the late 20th century head hunting and cannibalism had been practically eradicated, in the past they were practiced in many parts of the country as part of rituals related to warfare and taking in enemy spirits or powers. In 1901, on Gorabari Island in the Gulf of Papua, missionary Harry Donsey found 10,000 skulls in the island's longhouses, a demonstration of past practices. According to Mariana Torgovnik, writing in 1991, the most fully documented instances of cannibalism as a social institution come from New Guinea, where head hunting and ritual cannibalism survived, in certain isolated areas, into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and still leave traces within certain social groups. Little was known in Europe about the island until the 19th century, although Portuguese and Spanish explorers, such as D.O.M. Jorge de Menezes and Inigo Ortiz de Rites, had encountered it as early as the 16th century. Traders from Southeast Asia had visited New Guinea beginning 5,000 years ago to collect Bird of Paradise plumes. The country's dual name results from its complex administrative history before independence. The word Papua is derived from an old local term of uncertain origin. New Guinea was the name coined by the Spanish explorer Inigo Ortiz de Rites. In 1545, he noted the resemblance of the people to those he had earlier seen along the Guinea coast of Africa. Guinea in its turn, is etymologically derived from Portuguese word Guin. The name is one of several toponyms sharing similar etymologies, ultimately meaning land of the blacks or similar meanings, in reference to the dark skin of the inhabitants. In the 19th century, Germany ruled the northern half of the country for some decades, beginning in 1884 as a colony named German New Guinea. In 1914 after the outbreak of the World War I, Australian forces landed and captured German New Guinea in a small military campaign. Australia maintained occupation of the territory with its forces through the war. After the war, in which Germany and the Central Powers were defeated, the League of Nations authorized Australia to administer this area as a mandate territory. The southern half of the country had been colonized in 1884 by the United Kingdom as British New Guinea. With the Papua Act 1905, the UK transferred this territory to the newly formed Commonwealth of Australia, which took on its administration. Additionally, from 1905, British New Guinea was renamed as the Territory of Papua. In contrast to establishing an Australian mandate in former German New Guinea, the League of Nations determined that Papua was an external territory of the Australian Commonwealth, 
as a matter of law it remained a British possession. The difference in legal status meant that until 1949, Papua and New Guinea had entirely separate administrations, both controlled by Australia. These conditions contributed to the complexity of organising the country's post-independence legal system. During World War II, the New Guinea campaign was one of the major military campaigns and conflicts between Japan and the Allies. Approximately 216,000 Japanese, Australian, and US servicemen died. After World War II and the victory of the Allies, the two territories were combined into the territory of Papua and New Guinea. This was later referred to as Papua New Guinea. The natives of Papua appealed to the United Nations for oversight and independence. The nation established independence from Australia on September 16, 1975, becoming a Commonwealth realm continuing to share Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state. It maintains close ties with Australia, which continues to be its largest aid donor. Papua New Guinea was admitted to membership in the United Nations on October 10, 1975. A secessionist revolt in 1975-76 on Bougainville Island resulted in an 11th-hour modification of the draft constitution of Papua New Guinea to allow for Bougainville and the other 18 districts to have quasi-federal status as provinces. A renewed uprising on Bougainville Island started in 1988 and claimed 20,000 lives until it was resolved in 1997. Bougainville had been the chief mining region of the country, generating 40% of the national budget. The native peoples felt they were bearing the adverse environmental effects of the mining, which poisoned the land, water, and air, without gaining a fair share of the profits. The government and rebels negotiated a peace agreement that established the Bougainville Autonomous District and Province. The autonomous Bougainville elected Joseph Cabby as president in 2005, who served until his death in 2008. He was succeeded by his deputy John Tabinaman as acting president while an election to fill the unexpired term was organized. James Tannis won that election in December 2008 and served until the inauguration of John Momies, the winner of the 2010 elections. As part of the current peace settlement, a referendum on independence is planned to be held in Bougainville sometime before mid-2020. Preparations were underway in 2015. Numerous Chinese have worked and lived in Papua New Guinea, establishing Chinese-majority communities. Chinese merchants became established in the islands before European exploration. Anti-Chinese rioting involving tens of thousands of people broke out in May 2009. The initial spark was a fight between ethnic Chinese and Papua New Guinean workers at a nickel factory under construction by a Chinese company. Native resentment against Chinese ownership of numerous small businesses and their commercial monopoly in the islands led to the rioting. The Chinese have long been merchants in Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is a Commonwealth realm. Queen Elizabeth II is its sovereign and head of state. The Constitutional Convention, which prepared the draft constitution, and Australia, the outgoing metropolitan power, had thought that Papua New Guinea would not remain a monarchy. The founders, however, considered that imperial honours had a cachet. The monarch is represented by the Governor-General of Papua New Guinea, currently Bob Dadi. Papua New Guinea are unusual among Commonwealth realms in that Governors-General are elected by the legislature, rather than chosen by the executive branch. The Prime Minister heads the Cabinet, which consists of 31 MPs from the ruling coalition, which make up the government. 
The current Prime Minister is Peter O'Neill. The unicameral National Parliament has 111 seats, of which 22 are occupied by the governors of the 22 provinces and the National Capital District. Candidates for members of Parliament are voted upon when the Prime Minister asks the Governor-General to call a national election, a maximum of five years after the previous national election. In the early years of independence, the instability of the party system led to frequent votes of no confidence in Parliament, with resulting changes of the government, but with referral to the electorate through national elections only occurring every five years. In recent years, successive governments have passed legislation preventing such votes sooner than 18 months after a national election and within 12 months of the next election. In December 2012, the first two readings were passed to prevent votes of no confidence occurring within the first 30 months. This restriction on votes of no confidence has arguably resulted in greater stability, although perhaps at a cost of reducing the accountability of the executive branch of government. Elections in PNG attract numerous candidates. After independence in 1975, members were elected by the first-past-the-post system, with winners frequently gaining less than 15% of the vote. Electoral reforms in 2001 introduced the limited preferential vote system, a version of the alternative vote. The 2007 general election was the first to be conducted using LPV. In 2011 there was a constitutional crisis between the parliament-elect Prime Minister, Peter O'Neill, and Sir Michael Somer, who was deemed by the Supreme Court to retain office. The standoff between Parliament and the Supreme Court continued until the July 2012 national elections, with legislation passed effectively removing the Chief Justice and subjecting the Supreme Court members to greater control by the legislature, as well as a series of other laws passed, for example limiting the age for a Prime Minister. The confrontation reached a peak with the Deputy Prime Minister entering the Supreme Court during a hearing, escorted by some police, ostensibly to arrest the Chief Justice. There was strong pressure among some MPs to defer the national elections for a further six months to one year, although their powers to do that were highly questionable. The Parliament-elect Prime Minister and other cooler-headed MPs carried the votes for the writs for the new election to be issued, slightly late, but for the election itself to occur on time, thereby avoiding a continuation of the constitutional crisis. The crisis was tense at times, but largely restricted to the political and legal fraternity, plus some police factions. The public and public service stood back. It was a period when, with increased telecommunication access and use of social media, the public and students played some part in helping maintain restraint and demanding the leadership to adhere to constitutional processes. They insisted on having the elections so that the people could say who should be their legitimate representatives for the next five years. Under an amendment of 2002, the leader of the party winning the largest number of seats in the election is invited by the Governor-General to form the government, if he can muster the necessary majority in Parliament. The process of forming such a coalition in PNG, where parties do not have much ideology, involves considerable ORI trading right up until the last moment. Peter O'Neill emerged as Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister after the July 2012 election, and formed a government with Leo Dion, the former Governor of East New Britain Province, as Deputy Prime Minister. The unicameral Parliament enacts legislation in the same manner as in other jurisdictions that have cabinet, responsible government, or parliamentary democracy. It is introduced by the executive government to the legislature, debated and, 
if passed, becomes law when it receives royal assent by the Governor General. Most legislation is regulation implemented by the bureaucracy under enabling legislation previously passed by Parliament. All ordinary statutes enacted by Parliament must be consistent with the Constitution. The courts have jurisdiction to rule on the constitutionality of statutes, both in disputes before them and on a reference where there is no dispute but only an abstract question of law. Unusual among developing countries, the judicial branch of government in Papua New Guinea has remained remarkably independent, and successive executive governments have continued to respect its authority. The underlying law consists of principles and rules of common law and equity in England common law as it stood on September 16, 1975, and thereafter the decisions of PNG's own courts. The courts are directed by the Constitution and, latterly, the Underlying Law Act, to take note of the custom of traditional communities. They are to determine which customs are common to the whole country and may be declared also to be part of the underlying law. In practice, this has proved extremely difficult and has been largely neglected. Statutes are largely adapted from overseas jurisdictions, primarily Australia and England. Advocacy in the courts follows the adversarial pattern of other common law countries. This national court system, used in towns and cities, is supported by a village court system in the more remote areas. The law underpinning the village courts is customary law. Admiralty Islands lowland rainforests forested islands to the north of the mainland, home to a distinct flora, central range montane rainforests. The green jungle of Papua New Guinea bears a sharp contrast to the nearby desert of Australia, Huan Peninsula Montane Rainforests, Louisiad Archipelago Rainforests, New Britain New Ireland Lowland Rainforests, New Britain New Ireland Montane Rainforests, New Guinea Mangroves, Northern New Guinea Lowland Rain and Freshwater Swamp Forests, Northern. New Guinea Montane Rainforests, Solomon Islands Rainforests, Southeastern Papuan Rainforests, Southern New Guinea Freshwater Swamp Forests, Southern New Guinea Lowland Rainforests, Trobriand Islands Rainforests, Trans Fly Savanna and Grasslands, Central Range Subalpine Grasslands. Emerging Industrial Technology for Downstream Processing, Infrastructure Technology for the Economic Corridors, Knowledge-Based Technology, Science and Engineering Education, and, to reach the target of investing 5% of GDP in research and development by 2050. List of Airports in Papua New Guinea, List of Cities and Towns in Papua New Guinea, List of diplomatic missions in Papua New Guinea, List of districts and local level governments of Papua New Guinea, List of earthquakes in Papua New Guinea, List of Papua New Guineans, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, The World Factbook, Central Intelligence Agency, Papua New Guinea at UCB Libraries Gov Pubs. Papua New Guinea at Kuli, Wikimedia Atlas of Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea Travel Guide from Wikivoyage, Geographic Data Related to Papua New Guinea at OpenStreetMap. In Foreign Policy, Papua New Guinea is a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, Pacific Islands Forum, and the Melanesian Spearhead Group of Countries. It was accorded observer status within ASEAN in 1976, followed later by special observer status in 1981. It is also a member of APEC and an ACP country, associated with the European Union. 
The country has a low-key initiative when it comes to the Indonesia-sponsored genocide in West Papua due to its application in ASEAN, where the headquarters is in Jakarta. Papua New Guinea has positive ties with Australia and countries in Oceania. It also has good ties with fellow Christian country, the Philippines, especially in the education sector. The country's policy has been focusing on ties with Southeast Asia in recent years due to its application in ASEAN, which is supported by the Philippines and CO Observe Timor Leste. The Papua New Guinea Defence Force is the military organisation responsible for the defence of Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is often ranked as likely the worst place in the world for violence against women. A 2013 study in The Lancet found that 41% of men on Bougainville Island, Papua New Guinea, reported having raped a non-partner, while 14.1% reported having committed gang rape. According to UNICEF, Nearly half of reported rape victims are under 15 years of age and 13% are under 7 years of age. A report by Child Fund Australia, citing former parliamentarian Dame Carol Kidju, claimed 50% of those seeking medical help after rape are under 16, 25% are under 12, and 10% are under 8. Homosexual acts are prohibited by law in Papua New Guinea. The 1976 Sorcery Act imposed a penalty of up to two years in prison for the practice of black magic, until the act was repealed in 2013. An estimated 5150 alleged witches are killed each year in Papua New Guinea. There are also no protections given to LGBT citizens in the country. Papua New Guinea is one of the very few Christian countries in present time to criminalize homosexuality. Papua New Guinea is divided into four regions, which are not the primary administrative divisions but are quite significant in many aspects of government, commercial, sporting and other activities. The nation has 22 province-level divisions, 20 provinces, the Autonomous Region of Bougainville and the National Capital District. Each province is divided into one or more districts, which in turn are divided into one or more local-level government areas. Provinces are the primary administrative divisions of the country. Provincial governments are branches of the national government Papua New Guinea is not a federation of provinces. The province-level divisions are as follows. In 2009, Parliament approved the creation of two additional provinces, Hela Province, consisting of part of the existing Southern Highlands Province, and Juwaka Province, formed by dividing Western Highlands Province. Juwaka and Hela officially became separate provinces on May 17, 2012. The declaration of Hela and Juwaka is a result of the largest liquefied natural gas project in the country that is situated in both provinces. The government set June 15, 2019 as the voting date for an independence referendum in the Bougainville. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute has said that there is a wide expectation Bougainville will vote to become independent. At 462,840 km2, Papua New Guinea is the world's 54th largest country. Including all its islands, it lies between latitudes 0 degrees and 12 degrees south, and longitudes 140 degrees and 160 degrees east. Located north of the Australian mainland, the country's geography is diverse and, in places, extremely rugged. A spine of mountains, the New Guinea Highlands, runs the length of the island of New Guinea, forming a populous highlands region mostly covered with tropical rainforest, and the long Papuan Peninsula, known as the Bird's Tail. 
Dense rainforests can be found in the lowland and coastal areas as well as very large wetland areas surrounding the Sepik and Fly rivers. This terrain has made it difficult for the country to develop transportation infrastructure. Some areas are accessible only on foot or by aeroplane. The highest peak is Mount Wilhelm at 4,509 meters. Papua New Guinea is surrounded by coral reefs which are under close watch, in the interests of preservation. The country is situated on the Pacific Ring of Fire, at the point of collision of several tectonic plates. There are a number of active volcanoes, and eruptions are frequent. Earthquakes are relatively common, sometimes accompanied by tsunamis. The mainland of the country is the eastern half of New Guinea Island, where the largest towns are also located, including Port Moresby and Lat. Other major islands within Papua New Guinea include New Ireland, New Britain, Manus, and Bougainville. Papua New Guinea is one of the few regions close to the equator that experience snowfall, which occurs in the most elevated parts of the mainland. The border between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia was confirmed by treaty with Australia before independence in 1974. Maritime boundaries with Australia were confirmed by a treaty in 1978. Papua New Guinea is part of the Australasia Ecozone, which also includes Australia, New Zealand, Eastern Indonesia and several Pacific Island groups, including the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Geologically, the island of New Guinea is a northern extension of the Indo-Australian tectonic plate, forming part of a single land mass which is Australia New Guinea. It is connected to the Australian segment by a shallow continental shelf across the Torres Strait, which in former ages had lain exposed as a land bridge, particularly during ice ages when sea levels were lower than at present. Consequently, many species of birds and mammals found on New Guinea have close genetic links with corresponding species found in Australia. One notable feature in common for the two land masses is the existence of several species of marsupial mammals, including some kangaroos and possums, which are not found elsewhere. Papua New Guinea is a megadiverse country. Many of the other islands within PNG territory, including New Britain, New Ireland, Bougainville, the Admiralty Islands, the Trobriand Islands, and the Louisiade Archipelago, were never linked to New Guinea by land bridges. As a consequence, they have their own flora and fauna, in particular, they lack many of the land mammals and flightless birds that are common to New Guinea and Australia. Australia and New Guinea are portions of the ancient supercontinent of Gondwana, which started to break into smaller continents in the Cretaceous era. 66 130 million years ago. Australia finally broke free from Antarctica about 45 million years ago. All the Australasian lands are home to the Antarctic flora, descended from the flora of southern Gondwana, including the coniferous podocarps and araucaria pines, and the broad leafed southern beech. These plant families are still present in Papua New Guinea. As the Indo-Australian plate drifts north, it collides with the Eurasian plate. The collision of the two plates pushed up the Himalayas, the Indonesian islands, and New Guinea's central range. The central range is much younger and higher than the mountains of Australia, so high that it is home to rare equatorial glaciers. New Guinea is part of the humid tropics and many Indo-Malayan rainforest plants spread across the narrow straits from Asia, mixing together with the old Australian and Antarctic floras. PNG includes a number of terrestrial ecorjuns. 
Three new species of mammals were discovered in the forests of Papua New Guinea by an Australian-led expedition. A small wallaby, a large-eared mouse and shrew-like marsupial were discovered. The expedition was also successful in capturing photographs and video footage of some other rare animals such as the Tenkile tree kangaroo and the Vimang tree kangaroo. At current rates of deforestation, more than half of Papua New Guinea's forests could be lost or seriously degraded by 2021, according to a new satellite study of the region. Nearly one quarter of Papua New Guinea's rhine forests were damaged or destroyed between 1972 and 2002. On February 25, 2018, an earthquake of magnitude 7.5 and depth of 35 km struck the middle of Papua New Guinea. The worst of the damage centered around the southern highlands region. As of March 1 there were 31 reported deaths, and that number was expected to rise. Papua New Guinea is richly endowed with natural resources, including mineral and renewable resources, such as forests, marine, and in some parts agriculture. The rugged terrain including high mountain ranges and valleys, swamps and islands and high cost of developing infrastructure, combined with other factors makes it difficult for outside developers. Local developers are handicapped by years of deficient investment in education, health, ICT, and access to finance. Agriculture, for subsistence, and cash crops, provides a livelihood for 85% of the population and continues to provide some 30% of GDP. Mineral deposits, including gold, oil, and copper, account for 72% of export earnings. Oil palm production has grown steadily over recent years with palm oil now the main agricultural export. In households participating, coffee remains the major export crop, followed by cocoa and coconut oil slash copper from the coastal areas, each largely produced by smallholders and tea, produced on estates and rubber. The Iaja Fuz slash Hedonia field was discovered in 1986 in the Papuan Fold and Thrust Belt, 471. Former Prime Minister Sir Mikaram Marauta tried to restore integrity to state institutions, stabilize the Kina, restore stability to the national budget, privatize public enterprises where appropriate, and ensure ongoing peace on Bougainville following the 1997 agreement which ended Bougainville's secessionist unrest. The Marauta government had considerable success in attracting international support, specifically gaining the backing of the IMF and the World Bank in securing development assistance loans. Significant challenges face Prime Minister Sir Michael Somer, including gaining further investor confidence, continuing efforts to privatise government assets, and maintaining the support of members of parliament. In March 2006, the United Nations Development Programme policy called for Papua New Guinea's designation of developing country to be downgraded to least developed country because of protracted economic and social stagnation. However, an evaluation by the International Monetary Fund in late 2008 found that a combination of prudent fiscal and monetary policies, and high global prices for mineral commodity exports, have underpinned Papua New Guinea's recent buoyant economic growth and macroeconomic stability. By 2012 PNG had enjoyed a decade of positive economic growth, at over 6% since 2007, even during the global financial crisis years of 2008-9. PNG's real GDP growth rate as at 2011 was 8.9% and 9.2% for 2012, according to the Asian Development Bank.
This economic growth has been primarily attributed to strong commodity prices, particularly mineral but also agricultural, with the high demand for mineral products largely sustained even during the crisis by the buoyant Asian markets a booming mining sector, and particularly since 2009 by a buoyant outlook and the construction phase for natural gas exploration, production and exportation in liquefied form by LNG tankers, all of which will require multi-billion dollar investments. The first major gas project was the PNG LNG joint venture. ExxonMobil is operator of the joint venture, also comprising oil search, Santos, Cumul Petroleum Holdings, JX Nippon Oil and Gas Exploration, the PNG government's mineral resources development company and Petromin PNG Holdings. The project is an integrated development that includes gas production and processing facilities in the Hela, southern highlands and western provinces of Papua New Guinea, including liquefaction and storage facilities with capacity of 6.9 million tons per year. There are over 700 kilometers of pipelines connecting the facilities. It is the largest private sector investment in the history of PNG. A second major project is based on initial rights held by the French oil and gas major Total SA and the U.S. company INTE Royal Corp., which have partly combined their assets after Total agreed in December 2013 to purchase 61.3% of IOC's Antelope and Elk Gas Fields rights, with the plan to develop them starting in 2016 including the construction of a liquefaction plant to allow export of LNG. Total SA has separately another joint operating agreement with the PNG company Oil Search. Further gas and mineral projects are proposed, with extensive exploration ongoing across the country. Economic development based on the extractive industries carries difficult consequences for local communities. There has been much contention around river tailings in the vast Fly River, submarine tailings from the new Ramunical cobalt mine, commencing exports in late 2012, and from proposed submarine mining in the Bismarck Sea. One major project conducted through the PNG Department for Community Development suggested that other pathways to sustainable development should be considered. The PNG government's long-term Vision 2050 and shorter-term policy documents, including the 2013 budget and the 2014 Responsible Sustainable Development Strategy, emphasize the need for a more diverse economy, based upon sustainable industries and avoiding the effects of Dutch disease from major resource extraction projects undermining other industries as has occurred in many countries experiencing oil or other mineral booms, notably in Western Africa, undermining much of their agriculture sector, manufacturing and tourism, and with them broad-based employment prospects. Measures have been taken to mitigate these effects, including through the establishment of a sovereign wealth fund, partly to stabilize revenue and expenditure flows, but much will depend upon the readiness to make real reforms to effective use of revenue, tackling rampant corruption and empowering households and businesses to access markets, services and develop a more buoyant economy, with lower costs, especially for small to medium-sized enterprises. The Institute of National Affairs, a PNG independent policy think tank, provides a report on the business and investment environment of Papua New Guinea every five years, based upon a survey of large and small, local and overseas companies, highlighting law and order problems and corruption, as the worst impediments, followed by the poor state of transport, power and communications infrastructure. The PNG legislature has enacted laws in which a type of tenure called customary land title is recognized, 
meaning that the traditional lands of the indigenous peoples have some legal basis to inalienable tenure. This customary land notionally covers most of the usable land in the country, alienated land is either held privately under state lease or is government land. Freehold title can only be held by Papua New Guinean citizens. Only some 3% of the land of Papua New Guinea is in private hands, it is privately held under 99-year state lease, or it is held by the state. There is virtually no freehold title, the few existing freeholds are automatically converted to state lease when they are transferred between vendor and purchaser. Unalienated land is owned under customary title by traditional landowners. The precise nature of the season varies from one culture to another. Many writers portray land as in the communal ownership of traditional clans, however, closer studies usually show that the smallest portions of land whose ownership cannot be further divided are held by the individual heads of extended families and their descendants or their descendants alone if they have recently died. This is a matter of vital importance because a problem of economic development is identifying the membership of customary landowning groups and the owners. Disputes between mining and forestry companies and landowner groups often devolve on the issue of whether the companies entered into contractual relations for the use of land with the true owners. Customary property usually land cannot be devised by will. It can only be inherited according to the custom of the deceased's people. The Lands Act was amended in 2010, along with the Land Group Incorporation Act, intended to improve the management of state land, mechanisms for dispute resolution over land, and to enable customary landowners to be better able to access finance and possible partnerships over portions of their land if they seek to develop it for urban or rural economic activities. The Land Group Incorporation Act requires more specific identification of the customary landowners than hitherto and their more specific authorization before any land arrangements are determined, to acquire vast tracts of customary land, purportedly for agricultural projects but in an almost all cases as a backdoor mechanism for securing tropical forest resources for logging circumventing the more exacting requirements of the Forest Act, for securing timber permits. Following a national outcry, these SABLs have been subject to a commission of inquiry, established in mid-2011, for which the report is still awaited for initial presentation to the Prime Minister and Parliament. Papua New Guinea is one of the most heterogeneous nations in the world. There are hundreds of ethnic groups indigenous to Papua New Guinea, the majority being from the group known as Papuans, whose ancestors arrived in the New Guinea region tens of thousands of years ago. The other indigenous peoples are Austronesians, their ancestors having arrived in the region less than 4,000 years ago. There are also numerous people from other parts of the world now resident, including Chinese, Europeans, Australians, Indonesians, Filipinos, Polynesians, and Micronesians. Around 40,000 expatriates, mostly from Australia and China, were living in Papua New Guinea in 1975. Papua New Guinea has more languages than any other country with over 820 indigenous languages, representing 12% of the world's total, but most have fewer than 1,000 speakers. The most widely spoken indigenous language is Nga, with about 200,000 speakers, followed by Melpa and Huli. Indigenous languages are classified into two large groups, Austronesian languages and non-Austronesian, or Papuan, languages. There are four official languages for Papua New Guinea, English, Sign Language, Tok Pisin, and Hairi Motu. English is the language of government and the education system, but it is not spoken widely. 
The primary lingua franca of the country is Talk Pison, in which much of the debate in Parliament is conducted, many information campaigns and advertisements are presented, and until recently a national newspaper, Wan Talk, was published. The only area where Talk Pison is not prevalent is the southern region of Papua, where people often use the third official language, Hiri Motu. Although it lies in the Papua region, Port Moresby has a highly diverse population which primarily uses Tok Pison, and to a lesser extent English, with Motu spoken as the indigenous language in outlying villages. With an average of only 7,000 speakers per language, Papua New Guinea has a greater density of languages than any other nation on earth except Vanuatu. Government expenditure health in 2014 accounted for 9.5% of total government spending, with total health expenditure equating to 4.3% of GDP. There were five physicians per 100,000 people in the early 2000s. Malaria is the leading cause of illness and death in New Guinea. In 2003, the most recently reported year, 70,226 cases of laboratory-confirmed malaria were reported, along with 537 deaths. A total of 1,729,697 cases were probable. Papua New Guinea has the highest incidence of HIV and AIDS in the Pacific region and is the fourth country in the Asia-Pacific region to fit the criteria for a generalized HIV-AIDS epidemic. Lack of HIV-AIDS awareness is a major problem, especially in rural areas. The 2010 maternal mortality rate per 100,000 births for Papua New Guinea is 250. This is compared with 311.9 in 2008 and 476.3 in 1990. The under 5 mortality rate, per 1,000 births is 69 and the neonatal mortality as a percentage of under 5's mortality is 37. In Papua New Guinea the number of midwives per 1,000 live births is 1 and the lifetime risk of death for pregnant women is 1 in 94. Citizen population in Papua New Guinea by religion, based on the 2011 census. The courts and government practice uphold the constitutional right to freedom of speech, thought, and belief and no legislation to curb those rights has been adopted. The 2011 census found that 95.6% of citizens identified themselves as members of a Christian church, 1.4% were not Christian, 3.1% did not answer this census question. These who stated no religion accounted for, approximately, 0%. Many citizens combine their Christian faith with some traditional indigenous religious practices. Christianity in Papua New Guinea is predominantly made up of Protestants, who collectively constitute roughly 70% of the total population. They are mostly represented by the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Papua New Guinea, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, diverse Pentecostal denominations, the United Church in Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, the Evangelical Alliance Papua New Guinea, and the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea. Apart from Protestants, there is a notable Roman Catholic minority with approximately 25% of the population. Among non-Christians, the Baha'i faith has a strong standing. There are also approximately 4,000 Muslims in the country. The majority belong to the Sunni group, while a small number are Ahmadi. Non-traditional Christian churches and non-Christian religious groups are active throughout the country. The Papua New Guinea Council of Churches has stated that both Muslim and Confucian missionaries are active, 
and foreign missionary activity in general is high. Traditional religions are often animist. Some also tend to have elements of veneration of the dead, though generalization is suspect given the extreme heterogeneity of Melanesian societies. Prevalent among traditional tribes is the belief in Masalai, or evil spirits, which are blamed for poisoning people, causing calamity and death, and the practice of Puri Puri. It is estimated that more than a thousand cultural groups exist in Papua New Guinea. Because of this diversity, many styles of cultural expression have emerged. Each group has created its own expressive forms in art, dance, weaponry, costumes, singing, music, architecture and much more. Most of these cultural groups have their own language. People typically live in villages that rely on subsistence farming. In some areas people hunt and collect wild plants to supplement their diets. Those who become skilled at hunting, farming and fishing earn a great deal of respect. On the Sepik River, there is a tradition of wood carving, often in the form of plants or animals, representing ancestor spirits. Seashells are no longer the currency of Papua New Guinea, as they were in some regions seashells were abolished as currency in 1933. This tradition is still present in local customs. In some cultures, to get a bride, a groom must bring a certain number of golden-edged clam shells as a bride price. In other regions, the bride price is paid in lengths of shell money, pigs, cassowaries, or cash. Elsewhere, it is brides who traditionally pay a dowry. People of the highlands engage in colorful local rituals that are called sing-sings. They paint themselves and dress up with feathers, pearls, and animal skins to represent birds, trees or mountain spirits. Sometimes an important event, such as a legendary battle, is enacted at such a musical festival. Sport is an important part of Papua New Guinean culture and rugby league is by far the most popular sport. In a nation where communities are far apart and many people live at a minimal subsistence level, Rugby League has been described as a replacement for tribal warfare as a way of explaining the local enthusiasm for the game. Many Papua New Guineans have become instant celebrities by representing their country or playing in an overseas professional league. Even Australian Rugby League players who have played in the annual State of Origin series, which is celebrated feverishly every year in PNG, are among the most well-known people throughout the nation. State of origin is a highlight of the year for most Papua New Guineans, although the support is so passionate that many people have died over the years in violent clashes supporting their team. The Papua New Guinea National Rugby League team usually plays against the Australian Prime Minister's 13 each year, normally in Port Moresby. Although not as popular, Australian rules football is more significant in another way, as the national team is ranked second, only after Australia. Other major sports which have a part in the Papua New Guinea sporting landscape are association football, rugby union, basketball and, in eastern Papua, cricket. The capital city, Port Moresby, hosted the Pacific Games in 2015. A large proportion of the population is illiterate, with women predominating in this area. Much of the education in PNG is provided by church institutions. This includes 500 schools of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea has six universities apart from other major tertiary institutions. The two founding universities are the University of Papua New Guinea based in the National Capital District, 
and the Papua New Guinea University of Technology based outside of Lat, in Morobe Province. The four other universities which were once colleges were established recently after gaining government recognition. These are the University of Gorica in the Eastern Highlands Province, Divine Word University in Maidang Province, Vudal University in East New Britain Province and Pacific Adventist University in the National Capital District. Papua New Guinea's National Vision 2050 was adopted in 2009. This has led to the establishment of the Research, Science and Technology Council. At its gathering in November 2014, the Council re-emphasized the need to focus on sustainable development through science and technology. Vision 2050's medium-term priorities are According to Thomson Reuters' Web of Science, Papua New Guinea had the largest number of publications among Pacific Island states in 2014, followed by Fiji. Nine out of ten scientific publications from Papua New Guinea focused on immunology, genetics, biotechnology, and microbiology. Nine out of ten were also co-authored by scientists from other countries, mainly Australia, the United States of America, United Kingdom, Spain, and Switzerland. Forestry is an important economic resource for Papua New Guinea but the industry uses low and semi-intensive technological inputs. As a result, product ranges are limited to sawed timber, veneer, plywood, blockboard, molding, poles, and posts and wood chips. Only a few limited finished products are exported. Lack of automated machinery coupled with inadequately trained local technical personnel, are some of the obstacles to introducing automated machinery and design. Policymakers need to turn their attention to eliminating these barriers, in order for forestry to make a more efficient and sustainable contribution to national economic development. In Papua New Guinea, Renewable energy sources represent two-thirds of the total electricity supply. In 2015, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community observed that, while Fiji, Papua New Guinea and Samoa are leading the way with large-scale hydropower projects, there is enormous potential to expand the deployment of other renewable energy options such as solar, wind, geothermal and ocean-based energy sources. The European Union has funded the renewable energy in Pacific Island countries' developing skills and capacity program. Since its inception in 2013, the program has developed a master's program in renewable energy management at the University of Papua New Guinea and helped to establish a center of renewable energy at the same university. Papua New Guinea is one of the 15 beneficiaries of a program on adapting to climate change and sustainable energy worth 37.26 million euros. The program resulted from the signing of an agreement in February 2014 between the European Union and the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. The other beneficiaries are the Cook Islands, Fiji, Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Federated States of Micronesia, Nauru, Niu, Palau, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Timor-Leste, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Transport in Papua New Guinea is heavily limited by the country's mountainous terrain. As a result, air travel is the single most important form of transport for human and high-density slash value freight. Aeroplanes made it possible to open up the country during its early colonial period. Even today the two largest cities, Port Moresby and Lat, are only directly connected by planes. Port Moresby is not linked by road to any of the other major towns, and many remote villages can only be reached by light aircraft or on foot. 
Jackson's International Airport is the major international airport in Papua New Guinea, located 8 kilometers from Port Moresby. In addition to two international airfields, Papua New Guinea has 578 airstrips, most of which are unpaved. Assets are not maintained to good operating standards and poor transport remains a major impediment to the development of ties of national unity. Lists This article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SA IGO 3.0 UNESCO Science Report, Towards 2030, 535 to 555, UNESCO, UNESCO Publishing. To learn how to add open license text to Wikipedia articles, please see Wikipedia adding open license text to Wikipedia. For information on reusing text from Wikipedia, please see the terms of use. Government General Information